from under all this? What can I say? Paperwork happens to be one of the great tragedies of war. Could be worse, you know. We could be in the foxhole. Sometimes I think this office is a combat zone. Girls, I'd like you to meet an old friend of the family. Ollie Davis, Mary Ann Dexter, this is Sergeant George Osmond. Howdy. Hi. Hi. George is getting mustered out this week. Guess you'd be pretty happy to shake yourself out of that uniform, won't you, Sergeant? Well, can't say as it'll break my heart. After three and a half years, I'm looking forward to a regular job. Do you have any family in the area? Nope. Oh, I'm from Star Valley, Wyoming. Prettiest little corner of the world up there. But George is settling down right here in Ogden. Hey, how about that? I have a pin just like yours. Traveled halfway around the world with me. Saw the English Channel, Tower of London, uh, River Thames. Even caught a glimpse of Winston Churchill. Mine's just seen Ogden. What's going on out here? Just a friendly visit, Lieutenant. Name's Osmond, George Osmond. I'm a friend of Belva's. Well, Belva, either put him to work at a typewriter or get him out of here. Hmm? Come on, I'll show you the PX. Ladies. Close your mouth, dear. It's fly season. Tommy. Olive. Olive Davis. Yes, Mother. Your father is speaking to you. I just wanted the better, honey. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Here you go. Olive, you've been walking around with your head in the clouds all afternoon. I'm fine, Mother. What is the young man's name? Name? Don't tell me you forgot to ask. His, uh, his name is George Osmond. Mom, didn't you know an Osmond family when you were in Star Valley? Oh, them. I used to live with his mother, a young widow named Laverna. Oh, I thought George Osmond was the cutest little kid I'd ever seen. You know, I think I have a photo of him somewhere. You're kidding. Can we go look for it? Olive, the picture will be waiting for us after we've finished with the dishes. Well, you two will excuse me. I can see you're not going to be much help with the dishes. I've been thinking about George. I just met him today. Mom, we hardly even talked. And you wonder why you're feeling this way? Your father was on a horse the first time I ever laid eyes on him. I thought he was pretty handsome, too. The only thing he had to offer me was a little log cabin in Idaho. Do you think that stopped me from falling in love with him? Not on your life. Oh, I, I don't think I'm ready to fall in love. <laughs> you never are. Today, I met someone who's going to mean a lot to me. That looks like a well-balanced meal. Oh, well, George. Let me help you with that. Do you want an ice cream cone? Never turn down an ice cream cone. Oh, I have something for you. Here. Who is this? Look on the back. George Burl Osmond. This is my baby picture. Where did you get it? Well, my mother had it in one of her old photo albums. She was a school teacher in Star Valley, and she stayed with your mother. How about that? Small world, isn't it? Sure is. Oh, no. Don't tell me you let George Osmond get his hands on our ice cream. Well, it took every ounce of self-control I had, Valva, but I didn't take a bite. Not yet, anyway. Terrific lunch. Oh, 
Silva. Thanks, Alice. Tell your mom I'll drop by sometime. Do you know where we live? No, but I'll find out. He's a great detective. Don't tell me you've lost your appetite, Olive. Follow the sound of the music? Oh, please, don't let me stop you from playing. Oh, okay. You play very nicely. Do you like to dance? Sure. I was wondering if you'd like to come to the Saturday night dance with me. Music and somebody like you. Can't think of a better way to spend a Saturday night. You know, I can make a habit out of this. On top of everything else, you're a sweet talker, too. <laughs> you come here often? Sometimes. I love to dance. I uh, also play saxophone in the Red Pace Dance Band. <laughs> a delicate little lady like you? <laughs> What's so strange about me playing a saxophone? Nothing, really. It's just, uh... Well... I can't quite picture you. <laughs> it just doesn't seem... Like the kind of thing a delicate little lady would do. <laughs> no. It's just unconventional. You're pretty surprising yourself, you know. How's that? Well, Belva tells me that you hold down three jobs. She says that it's just to pass the time, but I think that you're uh, secretly ambitious. <laughs> Olive Davis, that's our song. Shall we dance? I'd love to. I'll let you in on a little secret. From the minute I saw you, I had visions of the two of us dancing together. So did I. Thank you. 
a motorcycle. I didn't until this morning. Traded in my car for it. That beautiful car, your pride and joy. Yeah, one pride and joy for another. Seems fair enough to me. Let's go for a ride. Oh, no, not on no, that. No, come on, swing. Not one on more. Come on. I'll be careful. Are you fat? <laughs> Here you go. Okay. Now hold on tight. favorite fishing spot in Star Valley. It wasn't as spectacular as this, but it sure was good fishing, though. Did you mostly fish or mostly toss pebbles? Mostly didn't have enough time to go. My. My father died just after I was born. I was on my own by the time I was 15. And I wasn't working to earn money. I was busy with chores. I sure didn't have much time to be a kid. You know what I really needed? A whole bunch of brothers and sisters. Wished I'd had the chance to be part of a big family. I grew up next door to a family of 12. They're, they were the happiest bunch of people I ever met. And they were so organized. <laughs> That's the kind of family I'd like to raise someday. sharing time with somebody. I mean, not being alone. Do you have any feelings about marriage? Well, um, I'm uh, pretty much for marriage. Oh, me too. W what about football? Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I can't wait to hear what happened to your face. <laughs> and then I thought he was going to propose to me right then and there. I, my oh heart. My really I saw my face. <laughs> well, listen, if you ask me, I think you could do a lot better than George Osmond. Belva, please. Look, honey, if you decide to take Belva's advice, give me George's phone number. I think he's a doll. See? Well, then don't listen to me. But I've known him a lot longer than you have, and you're never going to get him. He's been a heartbreaker from the day he was born. To I came to say goodbye. I'm on my way to Los Angeles. George. Now, come on, don't joke like that. <sighs> it's not a joke. I'll be in Las Vegas by nightfall. You're really going, aren't you? Yeah. I'll miss you. When are you coming back?
crying out loud. I'm really not hungry. Crash and burn. That's the story of my love life. Welcome to the club. Yeah, well, thanks, but no thanks. The truth. Friend to friend, okay? George wasn't even close to marrying you, right? How would you know? Well, I asked him about it. You what? Bella, how could you? I didn't think it was any big secret. The way you were talking about it, it was a sure thing. Oh, Bella. Don't worry. We'll get you back in circulation quick as a wink. I don't want to be back in circulation. I love George. I don't want anybody else. And I never will. Dear Olive, well, here I am in Southern California. I don't know when I'll be back, so say hello to Belva and the gang. I hope you are well. Yours truly, George Osmond. danced out. Yeah. That's special, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do it for you, yes. But, Belva, this is absolutely the last time. Okay. Seven o'clock? Your house. Someone will pick me up? Okay. Yeah, great. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye. George. When did you get back? This morning. I'm supposed to go over to Belvis. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to pick you up and take you to your date. What's my best girl doing going out with somebody else? I didn't think you cared. You sure are nervous. I am? Of course I am. I haven't seen you for months, and, and all of a sudden you just show up at my doorstep. Yeah, I guess that explains it. You can just drop me off at the next corner. Well, as long as I've come this far, I might as well take you the rest of the way. Well, don't run me off yet. I haven't even said hello to Belva. Are you sure? 
sure that's such a good idea? Don't be silly. Twist Velva's arm to let me be your blind date. She thinks we're wrong for each other. You're my blind date? I don't believe it. something over here for you. I went to Los Angeles to forget about you. But it didn't work. So I made a decision. Olive, will you marry me? Gotta keep these toys picked up. I could break my neck. You might think about doing the dishes one of these days, too. You're in a fine mood. Well, I would be if I came home to a clean house. Verl hasn't been feeling well all day. I just barely put him down for a nap. Honestly, when's the last time he cleaned this thing out? Oh, good laws, George. There's only so many hours in a day. 
Look, we spent months getting this house livable, painting, carpeting, wallpapering. I come home one afternoon, and now it's looking worse than when we moved into it. Well, maybe I could keep up if I had a little help. Listen, my mother always managed to keep a clean house without any help. I don't see why you can't. What do you expect me to do? Have your slippers waiting by the door for you when you come home? You might fix dinner for me. A man's home is his castle. I expect my dinner. The sooner, the better. I've been typing reports for you all day, George Osmond. Fix your own dinner. Olive? Olive, let me in. Olive? Not much of a cook, but I, I gave it my best. Oh, George. I'm so sorry I upset you. I'm going to do everything I can to help you out. I am. And I do appreciate everything you do for me. I do, I do, I do. I'm so sorry I hit you. <laughs> I'll never do it again. I promise. Good. Because you got the makings of a mean right cross, let me tell you. <laughs> Side by side. Today I almost wrecked that. So did I. We can both be pretty stubborn at times, can't we? Let's do whatever we can to help build things up, not tear them down. everything in the snowflake laundry today. Henry. Just joking, dear. Thank you. 
Come on, honey. Come on. Careful. Ooh. Go inside the house, honey. Tom. Tommy. Tommy, answer your mother. Tommy. Tom. Did you hear me? Good thing you brought Burl in, too. I'm afraid both boys have a hearing problem. How can that be? Burl's talking. He has the vocabulary of a two-year-old. He's 45% deaf. Tom has almost no hearing at all. I'm sorry. How could a thing like this happen? How? Any number of reasons. A viral infection during pregnancy. Incompatibility between blood type of mother and child. Hereditary factors. Mr. Corbin, my wife is carrying a child right now. Will this child have a problem too? There's no way to predict. I can only tell you what to do about Tom and Burl. They should be enrolled in our program as soon as possible. This is an institution. Children come here to live away from their parents. We can't allow that. If you just sign here, we can begin making the necessary arrangements. You just expect us to turn our sons over to you? No ifs, ands, or buts about it? Mr. Osmond, your sons are deaf. You're going to have to get used to the idea that they'll spend the rest of their lives in an institution. I can't accept that. And I won't. My wife and I brought these two little boys into this world. We love them. We came here today because we're frightened for them. Mr. Corbin, we'd like you to help us out. We're going to raise them at home, and you'll teach us how. Do I make our position clear? We'll be in touch. about the sound of your voice. Mm-hmm. Where you laugh. How beautiful you sing. Things that Tom and Burl will never be able to hear. <laughs> George, I'm so frightened. Honey, why would God have trusted us with these two children if he felt we didn't have the strength? I don't know. I just... I just wanted to be like... 
like other boys. Have friends and go to school. Go on missions and get married. Yeah. Well, they'll never be able to if they can't communicate with other people. They won't just have to teach them how. Yeah. Kids? I just put him down for a nap. How was your day? Oh, slow. Teaching the deaf? Read the opening paragraph. Teaching speech to a child born deaf is the most difficult task in the educational world. They don't mince words, do they? Where did you get these? I got them at the library. I've been doing a lot of reading. And a lot of thinking. We can do it, George. I, I just feel it. Let me read you something. If only your brother'd say that. Can I have some? Of course. Ball. Come on, Tom. Say ball. Ball. Three months and not a word. Just noises. Well, we're going to spend the next 30 years at it, if that's what it takes. Tom's a bright boy, darling. And these headphones are so strong, he's bound to hear something sooner or later. Tom. Ball. Ball. Cat. Okay. Ball. Yeah. Tree. Now it's your brother's turn. Cat. Tom, can you say cat? I can. Yes, I, I know you can, honey, and you do it very well. But we're trying to get your brother to say it. He never will. Set it right over there, fellas. George! Yep, next to that wall. Happy anniversary, darling. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> word.
keep playing. Look at Tom. He's smiling. He can hear it. You bet he can. Congratulations, George. You got yourself another boy. Thank you. How's Olive? I'm waiting to see you. Dr. Ward. How's the boy's hearing? Well, as far as I can tell right now, it's just perfect. Does that mean we can go ahead with our plans for a large family? I don't see why not. <laughs> man play ball with the kids and leave the gardening to the women. The garden's my project. George is in charge of the fruit trees. You know, if you planted your garden under the clothesline, you wouldn't have to do any watering at all. That laundry of yours keeps the whole neighborhood moist. Gosh, Henry. Ouch. What is it? Mm, a weed bit me. Oh, well, that's just a briar, sweetheart. I swear to you, George, it has teeth. <laughs> What's a fine how do you do? The weeds get you and the kids get me. You have to be more careful, Verl. Sorry. Well, it's in here somewhere. Why don't you come help us look for it? You know, you think a bright red ball would stand out like a sore thumb in here. Ready? The kids are starving, and so am I. Okay, well, round them up, Mother. You got it, Father. <laughs> okay, bro. Count off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Burl, you get Donnie. Tom, keep a hand on Jay. Alan, you're in charge of the picnic basket. Wayne, the cooler. Meryl, grab that watermelon. Let's go! That's enough. Or we're pulling over and you're all walking. We'll be there in a half hour. Let's sing a song, George, okay? All right. The old welcome back Give it a try. The old oaken bucket, the iron clad bucket, everybody the old oaken bucket that hangs in the well. You see? Huh? That sounds good. Do you want to try it again? The old oaken bucket. 
bucket, the ironclad bucket, the old oaken bucket that hangs in the well. What happened to you, Jay? I forgot the words. Well, it goes like this. The old oaken bucket that hangs in the well. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay, let's try it from the top now. Now, Alan, I want you to sing melody the first two beats and then take tenor for the rest, all right? <laughs> well, what's wrong, Mother? Tenor? Honey, they all sing soprano. <laughs> all right. Let's try it again from the top and sing out this time. On two. One, two. The old oak and bucket. The iron clad bucket. The old oak and bucket. That hangs in the well. The old oak and bucket. The iron clad bucket. The old oak and bucket. That hangs in the well. The old oak and bucket, the iron clad bucket, the old oak and bucket that hangs in the well. The old oak and bucket, the iron clad bucket, the Push, when you push it out, it'll hold it in your mouth. Yeah. All right, there you go. All right. Now, that part is called the mouthpiece. So you put it between your lips and you blow into it. All right, go ahead. <gasps> oh. <laughs> no. All right, what you have to do is make your lips really tight, flatten your chin, and when you feel the little reed, right there, it's called reed, vibrate, then you'll know that you're blowing it right. Okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Was he playing Bless This House? He sure was. Yeah. We wanted to surprise you. Both Verl and Tom have been working real hard at it. You too, huh? Yeah. Well, if I didn't know better, I'd say you've been fooling us all this time. <laughs> you sure you need that hearing aid there? <laughs> <laughs> you constantly surprise me. <laughs> Where are the other boys? They're in the house. I think we need to have a family meeting. Oh, okay. Come on, boys. Now, this afternoon, Verl and I spoke with Bishop Thatcher about the missions for the church. Now, because they're the oldest, Verl and Tom will be going first. The bishop doesn't think there's ever been a deaf missionary before, but he said he can't see why they shouldn't be allowed to go. Oh, that's wonderful. It's terrific. All right, hold on now. Now, we'll have to do a lot of planning. This is going to take a lot of money. But if we all work hard and we start a special bank account now, well, I think we'll be able to do it. So how about it? We'll try to do our best, Father. Yeah, maybe I can do yard work. Tom and I can work like we did last year. All right. Well, I want you all to put your thinking caps on. There has to be a way. 
we could be better than any barbershop quartet in the state of Utah. Oh, George. Well, I, I don't know. It's a nice thought, but... Uh, At least give us a chance. It means a lot of work. We don't like to work. We want to sing. Jay, hard work. Do you all understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We will work hard, and we know you will, too. Father, why don't you tell us all a story? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. yeah, tell okay. us a story. Yeah. Well, now hold on. Settle down. All right. What do you want to hear tonight? Hi, Jay. Ow, Alan. Just hey. My way. Hi, dear. Hi. I took a break from the office. How about a little practice, boys? Hey, George, there's a rainbow over your clothesline. <laughs> George, it's not worth getting upset about. All right, boys, come on. Let's line up. Okay. Hit it. We're side by side. By. Sure, this is the right place. She's right up there. I wonder if she'll see us sneaking in. She's probably too busy with the baby. You stand right here, and you come free, Sam. Silence. Oh, there. Now, isn't that better? Hello? Uh, this is George Osmond. 
Yes, Mr. Pulsifer, what can I do for you? You heard the boys singing in church. Really? No, um, we don't have anything scheduled for this Saturday morning. How much? Well, that's fine. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. The boys just got their first job. Yeah. Well, smile and don't be nervous, okay? Boys, you never go on stage without saying a little word of prayer. Mother, I want you to remember where your greatest strength comes from. But first, I suppose all you people are getting awful tired of waiting to hear some music. Well, we got a little homegrown talent here, the Osmond Brothers Quartet. We heard through the grapevine that the whole reason these boys started singing together was to raise some money for the missions. So you just give them a good listen, you hear? We're side by. Side by. with your brother, Sally. I don't feel like celebrating. What's on your mind? How were we this afternoon? Well, you heard that applause. The audience loved you. That's not what I'm talking about. How were we? Really? Well, you sang off key. Uh, you didn't stick to the routine. Rhythm was poor. And you looked pretty stiff. That bad? Boys have a long way to go. I just wonder if you're up to it. Hey, come on. So we got 
Fifteen dollars. And a missionary and fund. And make you money. Maybe now we won't have to work so hard. We'll just get jobs and sing and make more money. Play. Alan seems to be the only one of you taking this seriously. Well, he's the leader of the group. I guess that's to be expected. I thought we sang good. Well, I hope you'll be singing better at the Civic Club. When? Wednesday. Great, another job. Will they stole more money? Jay, you're supposed to be singing, <laughs> not picking up dimes and quarters. If you aren't willing to give it your best, it isn't worth your time or my trouble. Your voices aren't holding you back. You are. Well, why such long faces on a beautiful day like this? Father, he says we're not good enough and that we're wasting his time. Well, are you? Well, we're not that bad. Well, maybe your father thinks you can be better. I guess. He told us to decide whether we want to keep singing or not. Well, if I remember, this was your idea. And your father, he's just trying to help. He thinks it's real important to reach a goal once you set it. Now, if that means that you have to practice an extra hour a day, well, then you just have to do it. Your father, he may not always be right, but he's still your father. I guess we did make ourselves a promise. Well, I think that's your answer. bit of a hurry, aren't you, mister? Uh, yes, sir, in a big hurry. My boys are late for a performance. What kind of performance? Uh, at a veterans club. They're singers. Boys, uh, sing them a song. We're side by side. By. Uh, every story in the book. It doesn't matter at all when the ball has the floor was then parted. We'll be the same as we started traveling along, singing a song. Side, 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 side. We're side, side. Let's go, you guys. Veterans Club, come on. Now we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're ragged and funny, but we travel along, singing a song side by side. Don't know if I'm tomorrow. Maybe it's travel and sorrow, but we travel. Sharing our road side by side Through all kinds of weather What if the sky should fall Just as long as we We're 
Okay, let's settle down. Verl has a report for you. As of today, we have one thousand two hundred dollars. Wow! I think all of us should be very proud. We still need four thousand eight hundred dollars. Four thousand? I know it's going slowly. What are we gonna do? Maybe we should charge more. I don't think so, Alan. My father had an interesting idea. Grandpa? Mm hmm. He thinks you boys are good enough to go on the Ed Sullivan show. If we did, we'd make more than enough for the mission fund. Well, up until now, it's been kid stuff. But to go on television, you need a real act. You know, some jokes, dance routines, patter. It means we can. I know. Okay, let's do that again. One, two, and when we've all had quarrels and parted. Okay, this side note. Same as we started, just the traveling. Now, wait a minute. Alan, Wayne, this side. Jay, Merrill, this way, all right? One, two, ready. Just to traveling along. That's better. Singing our song. Stand up now. Side by side. And smile. That's better. That's much better. Father, Merle and Tom could use some help out in the yard. All right, that's it for right now. Out into the yard, help your brothers. That a boy, huh? How's it coming? Oh, they're really enthused. I think they're going to be good little troopers. I hope we're not expecting too much of them. I've thought a lot about that, too. It's not that we need the money so much. It's, it's that they want to be the ones to make it. Besides, they were already rehearsing when I came home today. Alan's really taking charge. It's their priorities that I'm concerned about. I don't want them to forget that we're just a family from Ogden, Utah. They're good boys, Mother. And they have a goal now. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. Besides, I couldn't get them to stop if I wanted to. Hey, everybody, you hit these marks. Okay, all right? Good. You want you looking straight out of the sky. You guys are the best. Okay, we're going to that. Okay, just look straight ahead. You ready? A anytime. Okay, Hank, we're ready out here. All right, tape rolling. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, boys, action. We're side by side. By. Before we leave the table, I'd like to read you a letter from The Ed Sullivan Show. Dear Mr. Osmond, enclosed, please find the tape you sent to us of the Osmond Brothers Quartet. We apologize for the delay in returning it to you. We cannot use an act such as this at this time. Thank you for considering us. I'm sorry. Me too. Well, how about some dessert? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Here we go. Oh Alan? No, thank you. Well, I've never known you to turn down my chocolate fudge cake before. I hope you're not feeling sorry for yourself. I'm not. Alan, life is full of disappointments. You can't keep moping around about the past. You must look ahead. Yes, sir. But there's still other shows out there. Yeah. Will you guys just be quiet? I said I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. Then why are you yelling at us? Because he's a crybaby. <laughs> Alan, Jay, outside right now. Ouch! Ouch! 
Let me pass that down. Thank you. Boys, if I discipline you, it isn't that I don't love you. But if you can't get along with each other, now how do you expect to get along with the rest of society? Now shake hands, smile, say I'm sorry to one another. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ellen? Thank you. Smile. Thank you, Mother. Okay, dig in, but listen up. You boys are going to be singing at the barbershop convention in Pasadena in a couple of weeks. But your mother and I decided to take the whole family. Oh, Tom and Burr will love it. Donnie and Marie, too? That's right. Well, if you think that's great news, you know our friends, the Evans Brothers Quartet? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They've been invited to sing on the Lawrence Welk Show. They ask if we'd like to come along. Oh, well, maybe, maybe there's a chance we'll meet Mr. Welk and have a chance to audition for him. Great! Yeah, terrific! Wow! Terrific! Well, shall we take a vote? Yeah. <laughs> I think the decision's an overwhelming yes. <laughs> Maybe we'll even go to Disneyland. Uh, can I help you folks? I'm uh, Jim Lennon. Are you related to the Lennon sisters? Well, I'm their uncle. Oh. I'm George Osmond. Oh. Uh, this is my wife, Olive. How are you? Please and know. my family, Burl, Tom, Alan, Excuse Wayne, Excuse me, Mr. Osmond. I couldn't remember the names anyway. That's quite a family. Well, thank you. Uh, the boys in the vest, they are the Osmond Brothers Quartet. They sing barbershop. They like to audition for Mr. Welk. Do you have an appointment? Well, no. Uh, well, actually, the... That might be a problem, but I'll see what I can do. Have a seat. Have all the seats. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I think he likes us. <laughs> Just be patient. I'm doing my best. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Mr. Welk's been tied up all day, and now he's on his way to New York. Thanks for trying. It just wasn't meant to happen. What your boys need is some television exposure. Well, that's what we came here for. If you'd be interested, I could give you the name of a man who's always in the market for a good act. You bet we're interested. box 
Maxine. Come on. Bring on the next attraction. Show business, George. But can't they see those boys are singing their hearts out? You want to see them fight? George. Come on. Well, you'd think they'd give them some sort of consideration. <laughs> the boys practice so hard. Get your foot logs. Get your foot logs. George. George, it's time to go back to Utah. Summertime in the good old summer, summertime. Strolling through the shady lane with your baby mine. You hold her hand and she holds yours and that's a very good sign, a sign that she's your tootsie wootsie in the good old summertime, in the good old summertime. It looks like we've got another barbershop quartet. Do you boys sing? We sure do. Well, how about singing us a song? Ready? Hi there, folks. How do you do? We're mighty glad to be here with you. A doodly doo, a doodly doo, a doodly doo. How do you do? Hi there, folks. What do you say? We're mighty glad to be here today. We have some songs we're going to sing. And some barbershop cards are going to ring. And when we get where no one else can see Just you and me Honeybee in my little baby bumble <laughs> Boys, that is terrific. You just got to come and meet our boss, Tommy Walker. Come on. Well, I'm a, a ding dong daddy from Dumas, and you want to see me do my stuff. Well, I'm a clean cut fella from Ogden, Utah. You want to see me strut? Well, I'm a ding dong daddy, got a gal named Kate. She's a mighty pretty lady that I like to date. Well, I'm a ding dong daddy from Dumas, and you want to see me do my stuff. Well, he's a ding dong daddy from Dumas, and he knows all the girls in town. He's a lot.
Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I'll, I'll be in touch. Wayne, Jay, up on the porch, on the double. Let's go. Olive, uh, find Tom and Burl and come on out here. Come on, Burl, come on outside. Where are Alan and Merrill? In our room. Well, would, would you get them? like another family meeting. George, what on earth is it? I just got off the telephone. A man named Jay Williams saw the boys on television when they sang at the Olympic. Jay Williams is Andy Williams' father. Andy Williams? They want the boys on his show. Two appearances. Great. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Olive. George, we saw the show. The kids were wonderful. They were terrific, weren't they? There's a couple of people that want to say hi to you. It's your father. Hi, Father. The show is great. Here's Tom. Hi, Father. I like the show, too. OK. George? Olive, one more show and we're finished. We're coming home. Yeah, we love you, too. We sure do miss you. We miss you, too. Bye-bye. We're coming home. Father in heaven, we are thankful at this time for the abundance of our lives and for the love and joy that we share. We are especially grateful that we are once again reunited as a family. Amen. 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 All right, Wayne, you want to get that salad going around? Use your napkins. Donnie, help us out with the carrots, please. Henry startled me. Just checking on the snowflake laundry. I wish you'd quit teasing about that. Fifteen years is long enough for one joke, don't you think? Olive? Yes? Honey, I... Uh, hello, Henry. Just got a telegram from the Andy Williams show. The boys were great. Mail response overwhelming. We are prepared to offer you a five-year contract. We reply at once, Jay Williams. They want us to move to California. Well... Let's talk it over with the boys. California. It's gonna mean a lot of changes. New schools, new friends. Well, there's one more thing. If you recall, the reason we did this in the first place was to raise money for the mission fund. You must go to your California. Tom's right. We're going to spend two and a half years 
going from door to door, teaching the principle of family love. If you take that contract, maybe some of the people who see you on television will open their doors for us and to missionaries like us. Maybe that will be your mission. So many changes. Burl and Tom going out into the world. The rest of us moving to California. Let's make this a matter of prayer. Our family will never be the same again. kids up there. Yes, they've certainly come a long way since the Andy Williams show. You know, Mother, you and I have come a long way, too. George, I loved you the minute I laid eyes on you. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, it was that second scoop of ice cream. I love you, too. <laughs> Side by side. 